we'll just cut this out, make a new piece, weld it in, and life's going to be pretty fabulous. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. We kind of got a little sidetracked. Uh, that happened. So, customer stopped by. We had a couple dad pops. We talked about a couple things. And, uh, I remembered, or I remembered, that we've got this rust up here in this corner <coughs> inside fender, uh, panel and you know we're discussing beautification we are going to go ahead and clean this side this panel here up and this down here and get some uh, paint code matched aerosol to touch that up and clean that up nicely but in order to do that we got to address this rust so we can't it be a little prematurely to go and dress this engine all back up and paint and start doing accessories and cred and leave that. So I decided to go ahead and dump the fender and we're gonna address this. Now, for a little shoebox, very sturdy, sturdily, very well put together. That fender's held on by one two in here there's one three four five bolts here one two three four five bolts here that are extremely hard to get to because you have to this it's it was bad one two three four five bolts here three uh, phillips headed bolts quarter inch bolts behind the the door seam here and one down here uh yeah and they're all capture bolts so this one we had to beat up the cowl just a touch we actually had to slice into the head of the bolt and air chisel that one out uh the rest of these we did vice grips we did uh different types of wrenches um I didn't video it because, you know, if we put sound in it, it would have just been a bunch of beeps. Like I've said before, I, there's certain things where I just got to muscle through it. And it's not very kid friendly. Um, and had I, you know, I could have put it on the old time lapse and played some music, but then you would have seen me throwing tools and the lip reading would have been pretty bad too. So anyway, fenders off. We didn't do any damage to the fender. We've got a little bit of bent up metal work here on the cowl and uh, we've got some Phillips screws here but the cool thing is our rust piece ends right here. What happens, what, what had happened is this is, this is one sheet, this piece is another sheet that overlaps and then there's plug welds here or not plug welds, spot welds here um so of course you're gonna have a problem between these two sheets of steel and that's what happened here so we're not doing this whole piece what's really gonna be handy though is we've got this seam here we're just gonna go ahead and cut with a wheel here and then down here i'll show you a trick we're gonna cut right along this seam here and then we're gonna use one sheet of metal that's thicker just to fill this in. We will not break it outward here. I'm not sure why this is broken outward, um, but we'll mirror this break and then we will uh, stitch weld this in all the way here, here. We take these screws out, this should end right here. We'll just cut this out, make a new piece, weld it in, and life's going to be pretty fabulous. Um, I've reached under here. The rust doesn't extend beyond this point. And then this is somewhere along the life of this Bronco. 
they must have thought they were on a dirt road mudding but it was like a tar asphalt road and they they spun her up and there's but we're going to scrape all this stuff off this is this is old tar that's covered in dirt now um but we'll scrape all that off clean all that up too and uh, clean all this up we're going to get all new captures for our nuts or for our bolts um odds are uh we'll get all new bolts too so uh that's just the kind of build this is going to be but yeah let's um see if we can get these phillips screws out and then we're going to scrape some of this stuff off and then we're going to just zip zip and replace hopefully this tar won't bite us too much ah. We just want the chunks off. We're not interested in taking the paint off. It can be a little scuffed up. Did that hit you guys? Sorry about that. Put your safety glasses on. Oh, I don't have any on, well, but I've got sanding on you all. Get the putty knives with the metal butts on them, because then if you need to, you can do this. any rust there all right that's a lot better we will pressure wash this before we put fender back on and make sure that any exposed metallic areas are uh, treated appropriately Gave him a little PB before I went in the house for supper. And that must have paid off. Nice. Alright. That's a good one. Yep. Ah, there we go. get these inside screws out or at least try it here stay nope the door will not stay using the ratchet to get this started just for extra leverage but it seems like it's gonna come out okay Maybe. Okay. It did come out and then it fell somewhere. But I do not know where that place is. Now, drill driver. Very nice. 
And this one here. There's another one way up here somewhere. Oh, I see it. I can get the driver maybe. Sorry, I steal the bike from you. It's spinning, it's just spinning in the plastic is all. So it'll be all right. Okay, we need to undo this guy. We don't want to rip that boot if we don't have to. Take him off. And I think. I'm ready to take this guy. I don't understand. How is this supposed to do that? Was this? Did they put this on before? Ah, here we go. There, you got a wiggle wobble. It. Oh, it's a good thing we took that off. That would have been rusty under there. Here, let me show you. Good thing we went the extra mile there. Me stuff and just junk over time has been collected here. Luckily, look at that. It's still very nice. I mean, it's wet from when I washed it the other day. That's how much stuff collects there. Um, so we got lucky, folks. There's no rust under that. That's outstanding. Clean some of this off. There. Now we can get to zip 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 buzz 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 bend well bend then buzz 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 and move on back on track if, if you're a professional body guy and you don't like what i'm doing you can go ahead and comment i'm not saying i'll change the way i do it but here's my plan we're going to come in with the right angle drill on the inside of here and we're going to drill two holes right below this bottom edge of this piece and then we'll transfer that'll transfer over to here and we'll mark that line and that'll be our uh horizontal cut across here and then here we're just going to go right with this piece to here we are going to stay above this pinch and these spot welds here and we'll just ticky tack it in and uh life will be pretty good that's the plan. I think I think we're in a good place. All right, I didn't have as much room as I'd hoped. So these aren't very far apart, but I can still get in there. You can see the line I drew with my finger. It was pretty, actually pretty accurate. And then we can still take a straight edge along those two holes. And by straight edge, I mean circle template. And we're going to draw a line. So what I thought was happening is happening. The inner piece stops right here at this lip. So not really surprising. That's what I wanted to see and that's what I expected to see. So, And now we'll come up we can measure that probably and get pretty close. And then we'll make this little angle here. We'll cut this corner just through this, this uh, or through both layers. We'll cut this corner and then we'll peel this outside layer off just through uh, the spot welds. And then we'll 
will plug weld there. That'll be one of the spots where we plug weld. All right, here's the final. We're cutting here. We're gonna cut down here and over here. We'll probably come straight across here. I don't know. Well, we're leaving this piece and we're leaving this piece so we can plug weld back into those flanges. Uh, we're gonna cut across here, come up here, come up here. Uh, we'll go here and then we'll drill out the spot welds and chisel that outer layer off. Uh, but this is all going. And then we will make a new break for our new piece. Uh, I think that's gonna do it. Here we go. There you go. I think that's gonna work. Like I said, we're gonna get these spot welds drilled out and we'll chisel off this piece. We're gonna go ahead and cut just through the first layer here and here. Um, I gotta straighten that line out there a little bit so we can get, we didn't get down. There's still some second layer of metal there. I'll straighten this out. I'll come across just in the first layer here and here. Well, not here, because this is the first layer. And then we gotta get through the first layer over here. All right, sorry, I forgot to hit record. But I did get uh, this guy chiseled out, this outer layer on this side. Um, that's kind of what's left of it. what I wanted to happen. We're gonna make a new piece for here and we're gonna replace these two layers of steel with one thicker layer of steel and we'll put the break in it so it matches this uh, angle and well they're in but it's time to yeah, make a piece of steel. But look at that, it just rusts in between those layers and there's really nothing you can do except get to clean metal on all sides and uh, rebuild. Day two of our inner thinner patch panel. We didn't do a lot before I got the camera turned on. We've got, uh, we cleaned up our edges, tried to make our lines straight. Um, ground the paint off where we know we're gonna weld to and ground some of the remnants of the uh, old uh, uh, spot welds out so we're pretty much ready to start building our patch panel and what we've got here is we've got about six and I don't know three-eighths or so widthwise and then from here to the break is about six and a half so we're going to go six and a half, a full six and a half by eight. Um, because what we will do is um, this break is kind of at, if you can't tell, it's kind of at a slight upward slope. So it's not like we can measure up from the bottom of our piece and, you know, throw it in the break. We're going to have to do some careful measuring 
but the goal is to have a little bit of overhang here to be able to trim this down on the sides and then also to have a little bit of overhang here it'll be more work trimming it to the exact shape but i would rather do that than make it the exact width and length i think i need and then miss this break and have to start over if that makes sense to you so we've got our piece of steel over here again this is as thick in one layer as that piece was in two so that's the way we're going to do it and uh, i think it's going to work out pretty good but we're going to cut a uh, six and a half by eight inch chunk off of this piece and then we will start to formulate and modify that piece to fit exactly in that hole. See what we got going on here we should be able to set this down in the corner get a couple magnets on it here see what's going on stay On this side okay we got our magnetized on there um, I'm liking what I'm seeing down in this corner but again we made this piece long for a reason so what we want to do right now is we're we're sucked in good against the edge over here and now we're gonna get our width correct so we're gonna concentrate on getting the correct width and then we'll do our break and then we'll trim out all the little edge pieces and corners and stuff and uh, you know do the final final edging on it because if the bins not right it, nothing's right okay we've got her to where we like how it fits in the hole now we scientifically marked where our brakes going to be and by scientifically i mean we eyeballed it by placing our old rusty chunk on top of our new piece of metal and tracing it with a sharpie so now we get to go over to the trusty and very dusty because we haven't used it much since we got it harbor freight brake here Well, the bad news is the Harbor Freight Bender really didn't like bending the huge uh, gauge sheet that we are using. Um, but the good news is we went over to the vise, got her done in the vise with the old vise and hammer method. And uh, I'm telling you what, we're almost spot on. Um, we're going to do just a little more tweaking here and life's going to be pretty good. Let me show you here where we're at. So we're holding this corner with the thumb coming up here. We've got this gap here and, and we'll probably have to do just a little bit of bending this way. But then we're also, I mean, this is pretty lightweight stuff, so it's going to come out as well. Uh, but there's our line coming across. There's a little dip here because we were beating on it getting that fender off. But here's your line coming across. We got to get our new piece a little bit flatter at 90 degrees. And then what we'll do is we'll come up and we'll probably put a little bit of a break lengthwise here in the center here. So we don't stress this joint out trying to pull these two pieces together and then we'll get it to where we can mark gosh 
just hard to do with here hang on as i was saying we're good down here we're good here this is going to overlap here and then we're going to suck it up and butt weld uh, the rest of this seam we'll probably come in and do a little bit of a bend this way so that we can pull this down and in and we don't have to rely on this inner fender to come all the way out and meet it because we didn't beat on this inner fender that bad so it's not too out of shape we can move we can get about a quarter inch but we don't want to really pull it out uh, that whole way but we'll get this gap to close up a little bit to where we like how this meets up and then we'll trim this we'll have to measure what this lip is here and we'll trim that off all along there and then we'll be pretty close on the inside that's what it looks like looking really good on the inside so all right here we are we've got flush down on this corner this will overlap here They've got just a little bit of a break if you see this line right here to pull the top part of this in and then right here is going to be our top edge right, from this way we're nice and straight through what we're going to do now is we're going to follow this inside edge right here with this straight edge and do another scientific trim we've got that little strip there to cut off and then we got to clean that piece of metal up and clean around our edges again. And we're going to start doing a little ticky tack. Yep, this is what we're going with. I know it don't look perfect, uh, but we've got it right here. Um, this is flush. Again, we pop out here because we're the third layer in this corner down here. You know, and that's part of the problem with this whole design in the first place. And then right here, um, we will grip this together. The magnet's not strong enough to pull it in, but we'll grip this together. This will bring this seam together. And then up here, we are really dang near perfect. So uh, pretty pleased with this. We are going to clean up that piece of metal, clean up around where we're going to weld, and we're going to start carefully tacking this thing in. Tacked in. That's from the front. This is a dent. This was here before I touched it. Front side, we had a little bit of burn through here. We'll have to be careful with that. And we've got a little bit of a gap in the back that we're gonna have to fill. But otherwise, looking pretty good. We're gonna start stitching that together and we'll check in with you here in a bit. It is warm today, but I think we're good. Um, one last update on the inner fender patch. There she is. I think we're done grinding. We've got our overlap here. Obviously, some of these edges are gonna show because you're going from, you know, things that were overlapped. They use seam sealer around this. Um, apparently from the factory and then on the inside nice clean lines we'll clean this up here 
and we'll run just with our finger just a quick little bead of seam sealer around these edges and then it'll get painted red along with the spender and down here at the battery box so goes right in line with the uh, inner fender we will have to drill a hole with the measure up from this hole it'll get a hole right around in here for the last spender bolt but we're good we have to go get some uh, enamel paint single stage paint now you can get it in the aerosols and mix it up and everything so we're gonna go grab that and we'll also get some seam sealer we'll clean this up a little bit we'll clean this up a lot of bit and then we'll kind of mask all this off and we'll spray that red that's what's gonna happen next 